Hello and welcome back to another spooky season review. Yes, this is still happening. Flashlights, spooky voices, and Facebook. <laughs> this is unfriended. <laughs> John Stark from MaximumTheGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic, and Unfriended is available on Netflix with audio <laughs> description. So, uh, of course, I had to watch it. And I, uh, I've been doing a lot of anniversary releases. Technically, this is the 10th anniversary of Unfriended, but sometimes I like to ask like the hard questions like, has this film stood the test of time? And I don't think like a decade is an appropriate amount of time to judge that in especially because the way that streaming has hit us really sort of since 2014 with the amount of streaming titles that we get like on the reg like, <laughs> like just on the regular all the time <laughs> is really sort of like pushing the boundaries of what are people willing to remember like, do you actually remember all of those random streaming movies that you've watched over the years? You actually might have a better shot of remembering Unfriended than you might Choose or Die, you know? <laughs> like, I think that the amount of people who saw Choose or Die might be higher because of its Netflix drop, but I think a whole lot of people were like, I feel like I've seen that. What was it about? You know? <laughs> like, it's... <laughs> So it has the potential of reaching a higher audience, but then so does Unfriended now that it's on Netflix. You know, it, ha it reaches all of the subscribers um, who now have the choice to stream it or not. Uh, should you, I suppose, is the question. That's what we're here to ask, is the question for Spooky Season is, should you watch Unfriended this spooky season, this Halloween season? So uh, let's... Let's go, shall we? Let's let's dive into that hot, hot button topic that everybody has waited to know. So, what is Unfriended? Um, Unfriended is a uh, what, like a concept horror film. I'm gonna go with that. We're gonna concept horror. Uh, it's not quite found footage because there would be no way for for you to actually find this footage. So, I don't actually know how, like, legitimately we would be. Uh, experiencing this but it has a <laughs> it has a perspective which I won't take away from it so points for perspective uh it's one of those things where they decided how do we tell the story in a unique way well the film is basically told from a computer screen and you see people over like webcams and then they join like a group video chat thing and spooky things happen over over the internet. <laughs> it's kind of silly. Um, it, 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 it's not that it's bad. It's that it, it takes away from some things and then it tries to like, I feel like this movie was made very cheaply. Like I didn't look up the budget, but I was like, if they spent over five on this, I would be shocked. Uh, this should be like a million dollar movie, like at best. Um, so this should be like really easily something that, that churned in and raked in the cash because it was such a low budget film. Uh, there's, there's there are no stars here. Nobody has turned out to do anything that I, I know of. Uh, I think everybody is just, was casually and unfriended and then they went about their life. So, uh, we start off with one girl, and she's checking out things, and for whatever reason, uh, even though she's supposed to be the likable one, it's, she's sort of our perspective, we're watching sort of her screen, and uh, she watches this suicide video, which immediately, like, puts me off. I was like, why would you watch that? You know, like, I mean, like, I get for, like, context purposes, but maybe we should have a less likable character that watches this? I don't know. Um... 
and then we learn that really none of them are likable. They're just all, all these characters suck. And like, as the film progresses, you're like, God, I hate all of them. Um, but they, they were all part of like a group that harassed this one girl basically to death. Uh, and a couple of them told her to kill herself and she actually did. And now she haunts them online. <laughs> it's a year uh, after her suicide and uh, they're, they're chatting, this main girl, she's chatting with her boyfriend and then like other people join the group chat and she's like, I didn't invite them. Did you let them in? I didn't invite them. And he's like, I don't let them in. So they, the other friends join and then there's this like mysterious icon with like no face. It's like that, that, uh, that graphic of when you haven't uploaded your profile image. It's like that. Uh, the, the, I, I, it's hard to describe uh, from a blind person perspective, but uh, I have seen it before and I'm trying to think of like what conceptually would I look like. It's like the top half of a body, but like not. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's uh, like a stick figure sort of. Uh, looking thing. I don't know how to describe this. This is where this is really bad. Um, it's a little, it's a little like graphic image that indicates you have no image. And so, but they find out that they can't really kick this person from the chat. And, uh, so then, well, they try to like leave and then reform the group and the person's still there. Uh, and then she starts getting Facebook messages from the dead girl's account and uh, she's like, wait a minute, what's going on? Who is this? Why are you doing this? Of course, it's the ghost of the dead girl, which is, you know, uh, I, I think fairly obvious from, from a lot of the clue drops that we're getting about, you know, it's the year anniversary. These kids all knew her. Uh, but, you know. Uh, and there was some incident. We watched her suicide literally at the top of the film. It's like the first thing that happened. So if if you're triggered by any of that, I'm going to tell you, like, skip the first minute of the film. <laughs> Just because that is literally the first minute of the film. Um, so, uh, yeah. And so these these kids are all there. So why didn't the film work for me? You're probably wondering, you're like, okay, this seems pretty simple. So what, the ghost kills them one by one? Yeah, basically. Uh, has like weird games and was like, don't hang up. <laughs> I told him not to hang up. <laughs> it's like, and it's all typed too, right? So there's no actual like voice attached to it. Like I'm doing a creepy voice, which, uh, you know, whatever. But it's all like on, on chat screens and stuff like that. So uh, which is absolutely why we need audio description because this movie would be, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I like conceptually, I'm trying to think about what would have happened if I had watched Unfriended as a blind person with an audio description. I'd have been like, I don't know. I would have turned it off. I would have been like, I don't understand what's happening because you wouldn't understand any of the, the messages that are popping up. You just hear a lot of people freaking out like all the time. You just be, Oh my God. Oh my God. What's going on? I don't know. I don't, think, I don't know either. <laughs> like, I have no idea. So, um, this is why audio description is so important, is because I constantly find films that are like this, where it's like, I, this film's f***ing unwatchable. <laughs> like, it's so, it's so far unwatchable for blind people. I don't even think that people understand what it's like when you don't put audio description on certain movies. There's some films that I can kind of, like, stumble through, and definitely dialogue-driven films that you can get through a lot more. Like films that have like limited locations, uh, not a lot changes, uh, very little. You're missing very little. Uh, conceptually, I haven't seen it with audio description, but I would say Ryan Reynolds in Buried. He's basically in one place the whole time and he never moves. So uh, if I didn't get audio description for Buried, then again, I have seen Buried. So that's part of the reason why I'm using it. But... I'm thinking about that conceptually and I'm like, I don't like what it, what would the audio, the audio description is going to bring up a couple things like, oh, he's using his lighter or, oh, there's a, I think there's been like a snake or something come in there at some point. 
Uh, like, very few things that ever happened in that movie. It's basically just Ryan Reynolds in a box for, like, 90 minutes. So, um, that movie, I could see, you know, somebody being like, well, do you, do you really? And I'd be like, I don't know. I guess he doesn't move and conceptually. And I could think of, there are a whole bunch of classic films that don't have audio description, but, like, Unfriended has audio description, but then Un Unfriended really needs it. So it's like, I, I want the classics to be auto-described, and then I also realized something like Unfriended would be wholly unwatchable, and people have the right to watch things, you know? We, just because we're blind doesn't mean that we uh, should have our content curated through incompetency. So, uh, yeah, I support the audio description here. It's a good track, because it has to be, because uh, even TTS audio description on this is better than nothing, seriously, because you would never know what was on the screen, Otherwise, the whole film, the ghost never talks. The ghost only talks through chat. And they don't, these characters don't obnoxiously read everything that's on screen. You know, like, oh my god, did you see what it typed? It just typed <laughs> this. Because, of course, they can all see it. So, it's not that poorly written. That would be hilarious, but it's not that. Um... So what I don't like about the film is that every time, I mean, every time shit's about to go down, it always like cuts away and then it comes back. Uh, so you don't actually get the sequence. It can't figure out how to do anything interesting other than to cut away and then like show you maybe like a flash of an image that's like scary. Like, oh my God, it's a scary flash. Like, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> And you're like, oh my god, that was spooky. <laughs> um, and then, like, w one of them dies, it might show you, like, the image. Sort of, like, afterwards, like, after the fact. The, uh, the dead body or whatever. <sighs> and it's just, it's, like, the least interesting way to get from point A to point B. Because, and it's the very PG-13 way, which I think this film is PG-13, by the way. Um... Because it can't show you any of the terror. But this whole film is built on terror. It's built on suspense. It's built on all of that. And I suppose the question is how would any of these people get from point A to point B? And they don't really have an answer to that question. Uh, except to show you a ghost doing it. or. Um, but I think the more terrifying thing is like... Uh, I think this film, if you've heard, if you've heard this film at all through any film, there's a scene where a character is like shoving his hand into a blender and like blending his own arm. Uh, it, but it's like, it's like a, a flash. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's one of those things where it's like, okay, so why is he doing that? Like what is compelling him? How do we get to that point? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is that? What does that mean to us? Like, who is doing this to him? These are questions that I still have that doesn't really, like, how do you get from point A to point B? Is there a ghost in the room? Is he possessed? Because if you can see somebody sort of, like, get up and they're, and they're like, what's happening? I'm not doing this to myself. Why is my body moving? Why am I putting my arm in here? You know, I mean, like, stuff like that would be really sort of freaky. Or seeing somebody sort of, like, lose their personality and sort of become, like, uh, overtaken by something else like they've like those possession movies where somebody just suddenly gets quiet and they're like and they just like go somewhere else and, and you're like what did did you just leave your body like where did you go and somebody else entered you know ghost has entered the chat <laughs> um so uh, there are more effective ways of doing this this does it in the easiest way but also in the least interesting way. Because it's basically like, so-and-so's about to die. Oh, we're going to cut away. And then we're going to cut back. And we're going to show you the horrific thing that happened to them. And we're going to show it for like a sec like a hot second. You know? And uh, generally just like cut away from that. So, uh, yeah, it just... It's like, I think the the, the, the scare... And you could do that, like, once. Like, right? Like, first kill, right? First kill, you get that, and people are like, I don't know what happened. What just happened? Because the first kill is actually really effective that way, because they still, they're like, they don't know. They're like, is she okay? Like, oh, maybe she had a seizure. Yeah, she has seizures, right? 
So like they're like literally trying to figure this out. And so it was effective. But it does it for like every kill. And it's really fucking obnoxious <laughs> at a certain point. Because then you're like, okay, so is it bad writing? Or did you just didn't have a budget? Like, which one is it? Because one of these two things, this can't be because you legitimately thought this was the most interesting choice for your audience, was to not show them how you got from point A to point B, but to just, like, be like, this person's about to die. We're going to cut their camera and then pop you back and they'll just be dead. <laughs> you know, like, whoops. <laughs> it's, I don't know. Whoops, there's a curling iron in her mouth. <laughs> like, it's like, what? How did that get there? Um, it's a great question. I would have much rather preferred that scene where a somewhere fucking say something that you know, like it's so bizarre. Um, and I don't know. You could have translated the the terror from these characters. It would have given them an opportunity to talk, and they would have been like, "Can they see a ghost? Is there somebody to see? Is there anything to see? Is anything? Ha what are they experiencing right now?" But in the most terrifying moments of their life, the final moments, the camera cuts <laughs> every time. It's so obnoxious. Oh, and it also does the thing where it screams at you at the end. And I hate that. Where there's like a ghost face like right before the credits where like the movie ends and then they're like, bah! and I'm like, God damn you. I've seen this way too many times. Stop doing this. That is the worst horror trope. Is like the movie has ended, and then like <laughs> the ghost comes out at you, and you're like, uh. I feel like I've already re reviewed something else for Spooky Season. I can't remember what it is, but just for this Spooky Season, I reviewed one other film that ends like that exact same way, <laughs> where there's like a like a, a face that pops up at the end. So, um, yeah, I. Uh, cinematic quality like i said points for creativity like the the chat window thing eh, cool you know what i'm saying like you have perspective uh we get to see things i think they use actual websites which is always refreshing when you have somebody who pays for the rights or like the websites approve the use of them instead of like a whole bunch of they they have this one website that they go to that's basically like a supernatural website which i have a feeling is fake but everything else like that is, uh, I mean, like they're using actual Facebook, not some like uh, weird, made up, out of nowhere social media. I always, I love those. I love those when they, like somebody's using a search engine and you're like, what is WeGo? <laughs> you know, or like you're like, what is this? <laughs> like they make up a search engine, you know, like the search doctor. And you're like, this isn't a real thing. <laughs> like, what is... Um, but, uh, no, they actually have real websites here. So, uh, points for that, too. Uh, for actually, instead of trying to, like, make up a whole bunch of fake things and trying to pretend like they're real. So, like, Spotify is mentioned here. Um, so, yeah. Uh, is it great? No. Is there a concept here? Sure. Is it executed poorly? Yes. Should there be an R-rated cut of this? Absolutely. Uh, that the, As long as it doesn't cut away, absolutely. Um, I, I don't always advocate for, like, more violence and gore, but the thing is that it misses the point of what actually... I think they think that things are not... Like, things unseen things are scary. And it's like, that's true to a certain point. But then you can't do that... Like, six of these guys... Six or seven of these people... <laughs> You can't do that every single time. Like, it wears it wears out. It just becomes a trope in your own film. Like, within your own film, you've created your own shitty trope of doing that. And so it just doesn't, it's not quite as effective as you think it is. First time, effective. Second time, less effective. Third time, I'm bored. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, so, should is unfriended for your spooky? I think some people will be spooked by it. Uh, the film certainly tries; it certainly, certainly goes for it. Um, and uh, I, it's hard to say the film is full of jump scares, but it, it's it's it, it has jump scares. 
because of the cutting away and then cutting back. And they're all kind of like staring at their screen, waiting for that like camera to come back. They're like, oh no, so-and-so's camera cut out. I wonder what's happening. Are you okay? You okay, man? Oh my God, what's happening to you? And you're like waiting for that thing that comes back, the image of their demise. Uh, and I guess when it flashes, that's a jump scare. Um, otherwise, there's really only like, I would say like one true jump scare and it's the end where they do the, the screaming face thing. And I'm like, God, I hate you. <laughs> I don't know what film started that, but whatever film started that, whoever gave that first idea, I want to go back and punch that film in the face. Like stop ending on, on screams <laughs> on these random screams that have no context where you have to break the wall to do it. Oh, I, Tarot, Tarot did this. Um, it wasn't at the end of the film either. It was, it, it, but they allowed the ghost to break the fourth wall because they were so uh, intrigued. And that's the thing is that it breaks the fourth wall. It's like, who are you screaming at? And I remember that in Taro, it was so shitty. There's a kill in Taro where this, where the the thing kills one of the characters, and then it turns to the camera. And this is mid film too. This isn't even at the end. It turns to the camera and then screams at the camera I'm like. There's no one else here. Who are you screaming at? <laughs> we were supposed to be watching a film. I am watching a film with fucking characters who are supposed to be people in a situation. Who are you screaming at? <laughs> like, this isn't even the end of the film. You know, like, this is like mid-film. Am I in the film? Am I tarot? Is this a first person? <laughs> like, is this, a, is this an interactive film that I'm a part of? So, yeah, I, I I hate that trope so much with all, everything that's been my passion. Uh, and it's not because it's cheap scare. It's not because it got me. I'm just like, oh my God, it doesn't make any sense. Because it's like, okay, so that's the end of the film. So who is the scream for? It's not for any of the characters in the film. Is it for us? <laughs> like, is it for the odd? Because then you're, you're just breaking the fourth wall. So stop doing that. Um... It's not the worst film I've ever seen, but it's also, I can't say this is a great movie. Uh, it, it rides most on concept. Uh, the thing about it is that the film is so poorly written that you don't even know who any of these characters are, what their relationships are to each other, other than just generic friend group. You know, we all know each other. You know, there's like the main girl and then she has a boyfriend and uh, then it's like revealed that she has also slept with one of the other characters that's it otherwise i really don't know how anybody else is connected there were like legit three other characters and i was like i don't know how any of you know each other <laughs> like just generic are you best friends you go way back do you guys have chem together like what how do you know each other there's like n n there's nothing here so um uh, I'm going to give Unfriended a C-. I don't think it's like the worst thing I've ever seen, but also at the same time, for this spooky season, I think you can find something better. But I totally appreciate the audio description on this, because it would be absolutely unwatchable without it. I don't think the film itself is unwatchable, I just think it's not something that people should watch. <laughs> Those are two different things. One of, some, of the, some films are just so bad that it's like, oh my god. And then there are other films that's like, well, you made bad choices, but there's if you just made different choices in some places, I think you'd have a better, like a better film. Like not the whole thing, not gonna throw the baby out with the bathwater type of thing. Like there, there's something there. You just needed somebody to take a second pass on it. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the other side.